So hi, I'm Hannah Cahoon. I am a organizer for the 2021 College Bill Workshop on Scientific Software. And the meeting is held on July 20th. It's virtual, so you can join us. And this theme, this year's theme is software teams. And so on that subject today, I'm speaking with Ulrika Yang and Piotr Luschek, who are authors of one of the white papers that were submitted for the conference. Um, so thanks to both of you for speaking with me today. And Ulrika, I was hoping you could orient our audience a little bit. Can you tell me some about the software project you wrote about, um, who you're working with on that team, and what you're working on? Okay, yes. So um, the main project I was talking about was really the XSDK project. I'm, I'm leading that project. It's a very large project which spans a variety of different people from different organizations, um, like national labs, universities, like Piotr is one of the people on the project. Uh, and our software product is the XSDK, which is a collection. It's actually an ecosystem of math libraries. So we have a collection of different math libraries. And our goal is to make sure that these all work well together. They have certain interoperabilities. They need to be built together. They're used by a variety of different applications. And so we need to make sure that uh, there are no conflicts between them. So a big part of that project is to look into that and make sure things work together. Now, since we are a big project that works across a variety of different um, institutions, as well as different states, including some people even from Germany, um, this is, has its own challenges. I'm sure you'll be asking about that. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so you did, you wrote about the challenges of working on this like team of teams and some strategies for mitigating those challenges. Um, coordinating development on multiple packages at once can certainly be difficult. And Piotr, I was wondering if you could give me an example of the kinds of issues that your team faces while working on the XSDK project. Uh, so uh, yes, uh, probably there are uh, too many issues to name in, in a, quick, a quick answer, but let me just give some. Uh, examples we uh, we have to face a variety of uh, of platforms and a variety of packages and a variety of teams and vari variety of development styles so uh, trying to to combine all these things into uh, into a coherent release uh, at least at least once a year um, uh, cr creates a challenge uh, based on on synchronization and and a lot of um, a lot of things have to be smoothed out, uh, especially when uh, when bringing together uh, bringing together the, the the teams, the 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 recent releases, and then the software, and then and then adding it to a, and running it on a platform that is of special interest to the uh, XSDK team. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the the issues that we have to come back uh, and and kind of uh, <clears throat> pr propagate it upstream to the developer. The development teams I, are sometimes not what they expect or, or or have seen in their in their daily work, so so that naturally creates a, a kind of an unusual conversation that that probably is not not kind of a part of their of their um, uh, development cycle, and so uh, so we would definitely bring uh, bring new things to the process and, and we have to work ourselves into their uh, their their existing. Um, work and and however the uh the, the github workflows and the uh, uh continuous integration infrastructure mm -hmm. do you have an example of one of those problems that might be outside of a developer's usual work but that they do have to deal with uh yes so definitely the um uh something that uh that we uh we we have to insist when when we go on the uh uh, different facilities within the Department of, of Energy is uh, we uh, we work with uh, much tighter and sometimes very unusual uh, software uh, constraints. So that's that that creates uh, that creates kind of unusual um, uh, unusual reporting messages and un unusual uh, locations of of errors and uh, and so the uh, the trying to get this integrated. 
into the uh, back into the in the build is almost uh, almost impossible because some of these uh, hardware software combinations can only exist at the at the facilities. So uh, so this is uh, we're trying to uh, to bring the uh, as much of our automation as as we can, and at, at at the same time, I mean, provide this very custom. Uh, custom port of the software that 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 is actually very good at being portable almost anything else other than uh, something that that just at first be, uh, appears to be an exotic platform but over time i mean we, as we work the the kinks uh, of the of the issues out it just becomes uh, becomes a commonplace so it's really the uh, this this uh, one off kind of uh, thing about some of the platforms that that really sometimes give us trouble Okay, okay. And uh, Ulrika, so software work is obviously technical, especially with a large team, but there's a social element to it as well. And you wrote in your paper about your experience with a large uh, in-person team meeting in San Francisco. And I thought that was especially interesting because normally you only hear good things about meeting in person and how that benefits the team. Uh, to be co-located, but you also brought up some of the ways that that meeting was difficult. Can you tell me about those and what you learned from that experience? Yes, um, I think it was very interesting meeting actually. So we had quite a lot of people there, maybe 40 or 50, it was a big project. And so this was the very first startup meeting for the ideas project, which was actually before the existing kit project. So Piotr wasn't actually part of that. Um, and what was, Interesting as we had suddenly a large amount of different people with different backgrounds there. There were software developers, there were mathematicians, uh, and they came from different institutions. And they all had also very different um, uh, ideas on how things should be done. And some of them were very highly opinionated. And so what actually happened in the situation was there was a lot of conflict at first and people had to start to communicate. Um, and we had a lot of very strong personalities there. This was not a bad thing, I think. Actually, it was a good thing because it allowed people to really um, be honest and talk about these things versus trying to be nice. But it was also a little um, disturbing in a way because you suddenly had these very strong arguments going on, which, um, you know, it, it was just the beginning for us to start learning how to communicate with, us, with each other and understand each other and also see the strengths and uh, work out. Like, for example, there was one a new um, product which somebody wanted to, to um, introduce there, which is actually used a lot now, but at that time it was totally new. And so there was a lot of um, skepticism about this product from some of the other software developers. Would this work? Does this work? And, and their opinions about this. All this, this product, by the way, has since highly been accepted by all these um, people there. And so it, it was an issue, but at that time people were just questioning a lot of things. And in some cases it got a little loud. So that's that was essentially what I was talking about. You know, yeah. but I think it was good because we started to get to know each other. We started to get to know about each other's personalities. And um, so we especially since this project could only work online. It was a virtual product because after the meeting, we all went back to all our places and we knew we would only meet online for a while before we were able to see each other. So we had an image, at least in our heads, about who these people are, you know, so. It helps, you get to communicate in a more natural manner, it's useful. Yes. Um, so we talked about some of the challenges of software work. Uh, but let's turn to the benefits of a large software team. So Ulrika, how does the size and the diversity of your team add value to your project? Do you have strategies for maximizing that? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so of course, one of the big advantages of having this big team is we do get all these different um, packages which have a lot of different experiences. So we have experts that know all these different backgrounds and now we can sort of work together. Um, on top of it, we have all these different um, software strategies. So we can learn from each other um, what one 
uh, of the projects does of the small and software projects does here uh, can be applied somewhere else. And so one of the ways we've tried to address this is actually we have these community policies, which um, we drew, we started as actually already at the old ideas project, um, where we started to um, figure out uh, what are the different strategies that we should have, what are some kind of rules or guidelines that will help our individual um, software uh, developers. Uh, keep in mind that all these libraries that we have are developed independently. So each little small team has their own strategy and their own style on how to do this. But how can we make sure that the overall product of the XSDK is able to um, make sure it, it's built together, it interoperates well, it, it plays nicely with each other. But on, on the one hand, uh, on the other hand, we also want to make sure um, that the rules we put in place are not too heavy handed. So people are certainly uh, have to make huge changes and which is something people usually don't want to do, right? And so, um, so these, these community policies, as we call them, are really helpful to ensure that um, our software is sustainable, that software quality improves, and we make sure we can continue, we can port our uh, software uh, libraries to new architectures, et cetera, because all this is important in, in the framework of the huge um, exascale um, project we are part of. And so, um, so it's it's essentially these community policies that are important for that. That's in a way you could say, do we maximize it? I'm not sure, but uh, that's one of the ways we're trying to make sure uh, that we really benefit from each other and, and, and help each other. Um, so yeah, and and I have to say these community policies are not set in stone, but they are. We we make changes to them as needed. So right. So what kind of can you give an example of a change that you've made? maybe most recently or just sometime? So uh, one big change we actually made recently um, was originally we, we, together with these community policies, we had something called installation policies. Um, they were together with one specific mandatory policy we had, which was talking about how to install, install certain um, libraries, because we want to make sure we can install them all together in a good way. And because we are using a different installer than we originally used, now, now we use a, a tool called SPAG, um, in the past we had something more generic and each library sort of did their own thing. We were actually able to um, simplify the installation rules and get rid of the, of the policies we had and instead we just gave some guidelines for how to use stack which were a lot less you know so that was one big change we made to make it easier for um, other people to actually or for uh, to new libraries to join you know, whenever we make these changes i mean so far the changes we made were not really endangering any of our current libraries to violate any of them but it will make it easier for future libraries to join and so right and so so installer instructions or policies that kind of brings us more towards a technical strategy as well. Um, and maybe Piotr, you can answer this question. What, what technical strategies or tools or processes have you used to integrate the smaller teams into one large and effective one? Uh, well, so uh, it's, it's, it's a, I mean, it's, it's a human, a human process. Uh, so a lot of it, it takes, takes place uh, during those meetings. So uh, Ulrika already mentioned the uh, being in person that helped a lot. I, I, I personally joined the project, uh, project later. So uh, ha helping with the, with the process was those, those policies. So that's th those policies in a way it's, it's a, um, it's this uh, integration piece between uh, different different libraries in different languages, and then percolating that back into the library. So the library that I represent in XSDK uh, is is Plasma, and and that particular library did not uh, did not uh, conform immediately from the uh, to to, uh, to some of the policies. And actually, uh, joining uh, joining the uh, XSDK was was kind of a very good reason to 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 go back to the to the processes and. Um, and and have a extremely good reason why we should change things around and 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 do things better. So so the the process actually is is very helpful, 
and 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 helps the libraries not not necessarily on the technical uh, level because technically speaking these these things can be achieved uh, almost trivially and um uh, but it helps with with people so uh, the, the, as the saying goes technology is easy people are hard so it is it is uh, it, it kind of uh, helps in in doing that but also the open process that that uh, Ulrike uh, talks in in the in in the paper about the uh, initial uh, meeting that that took place in San Francisco. So so the uh, being able to transition and and openly later on discuss these issues in in a really open atmosphere, that that I think is 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 very helpful, combined with the uh, the requirement that yes those policies are set in stone, and and we need to have this uh, for for much easier portability and 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 releases that are that are periodic and and reliable mm -hmm. seems like a you are a good example of how you could learn from the larger team experience and bring it back to your own work yes um well thank you for sharing those strategies and i'm curious if either of you have any advice that you would want to seek from other experts on uh how to how to optimize your software team. Are there questions that you wish you had answers to? Um, yes, for example, for our whole testing strategy, and actually we are trying to seek some um, advice right now. So we are we will be talking. Actually, Piotr and I, we are part of a small group trying to figure out a way to better do the testing for the XSDK. I know Piotr mentioned some of this earlier, the issues we have with testing in um, just uh, the very fact the packages keep changing when you start testing even our install tools back keeps changing and uh, you, you get, end up with a lot of failures and so every time when we're trying to have a new release it's a huge huge uh, project to, to make sure you do all the testing etc and putting something more automated in place um, that would be really helpful so we actually are meeting some people tomorrow that to have made further progress than we are, we hope at least, and hopefully get some good advice. But if there are more people next week at the workshop, we'd be happy to learn more about it, so. Well, thank you both so much. This has been wonderful. Thanks for talking with me today. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye-bye.